What is the possibility of the Department of Justice joining in the current lawsuit? Is there, is there any the, possibility of that, or le you know, are there legalities that would stop the, that? The court, uh, the the uh, the court will now make a determination as to whether this is in fact a related case, and if so, uh, the case could be uh, assigned to Judge Snow, and uh, then it would be up to Judge Snow to figure out uh, the appropriate next steps, and we will of course comply with whatever directives he would issue. Yes, ma'am. If you're saying that this is a case of abuse of power, can you explain to the public why there are not criminal charges involved? You're I can't comment on any criminal investigations underway. Yes, sir. Uh, the, our county attorney, as well as Sheriff Arpaio and others, have, have all said that uh, why isn't the Justice Department showing us their case, showing us the evidence they have uh, as it tries to uh, negotiate this? What's your response? Well, we uh, they have access and have received uh, more information, and uh, there was a question about the Melendrez case. Uh, regarding the uh, issues and uh, surrounding discriminatory policing of Latinos, uh, it's, it, I'd be hard pressed to think of a department that is on greater notice of the nature and extent of the allegations of discriminatory policing uh, than this department is on notice. And so uh, it's, it's uh, curious to me uh, that they would feign surprise, and in fact, when uh, the materials that uh, uh, constituted the majority of our uh, investigative findings were materials that were already in their possession. And so we now have a complaint process and we will now move to discovery and uh, hope we will move to settlement, but we're prepared to move to discovery and, and we'll move forward uh, as the court uh, so instructs. Okay. Yes, sir. Tom, you know the sheriff's claiming this is politically motivated, the timing is suspect. Well, we started this case in 2008 and uh, this case could have been brought to resolution far sooner. Uh, and I've outlined what happened. We had to take the extraordinary step in 2010 because, frankly, we were stonewalled. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, prior to 2010, uh, it had been 31 years since the department had to file a similar lawsuit uh, to the one that we filed in, in 2010, seeking basic access to information. When you get federal funds, you sign a form. The form says, I'll comply with civil rights laws, and when I get asked questions and ask for information, I'll provide it. That's why we don't have to file suit, because other jurisdictions understand that. And so uh, this case was undeniably uh, delayed far longer than I would want, but justice has indeed been delayed. But we are here to say that justice uh, will not be denied, and we will continue to move forward. In your opening, you said that this was rare. Can you explain exactly what you mean by that? Sure. Uh, we, uh, the police reform statute that I'm referring to, it's called Section 14141, was enacted in the aftermath of the Los Angeles riots following the Rodney King uh, verdict. And uh, it's been in place as a result for about 18 years. And during that period, uh, the department has been forced to file contested litigation, a lawsuit that was uh, not a lawsuit that was being filed in connection with a consent decree or other resolution. Quite literally only once involved the Columbus Police Department. And that case, too, was ultimately settled uh, between the parties. And so the, in the scores of other cases, we've been able to work collaboratively with law enforcement agencies because we have a shared interest in improving the department and making the community safer. Uh, this is truly extraordinary, just as our lawsuit in 2010 was truly extraordinary because law enforcement agencies had routinely complied with their obligations. And the uh, previous time that a lawsuit was forced to be filed by the department, uh, similar to the one that was filed in 2010, the previous time that a similar suit had to be filed was 1979. Uh, the independent monitor, who didn't take over LAPD, the monitor in Pittsburgh didn't take over the Pittsburgh Police Department, Cincinnati monitor didn't take over the Cincinnati Police Department, but they were critical components to that reform because uh, you need, the community needs that, the department needs that, and it's part of the rebuilding of, of confidence, having that independent uh, person in there who can help them uh, through a number of challenges. And uh, Los Angeles is perhaps the best example of how uh, an effective monitor has been able to serve a remarkably important role. Since Monitors aren't something to fear, they're something to uh, embrace when you have problems. But if you don't acknowledge the existence of a problem, then it's hard to embrace uh, the need for reform. Since yes, this investigation began, there have been many changes at the top of MCSO, as well as we have a new county attorney. 
one of the things we've been hearing here locally is uh, from our county attorney is that I want to know if these practices are continuing to this day since I've taken over. I've asked the feds to give me the evidence of anything that has happened since the time I've taken office, and he says that he's not gotten any response. You continue today to say that this is continuing to go on, these practices are continuing. Do you mean to this day? Do you mean in the past six months? Can you elaborate, please? Again, we're going to go into the discovery process now. The complaint alleges that from at least in the, in the category of um, the discriminatory policing. I think the complaint dates back from at least uh, 2006 to the present. In the jail context, I think the date's uh, 2009. Uh, and uh, the retaliatory actions date back to 2006 as well. And the discovery process will allow us to uh, move forward in those actions. We sent a letter to the county attorney in response to a letter that he had sent uh, back in, uh, I think we sent him a letter April, uh, eighth or tenth, something like that, which uh, detailed uh, was a detailed response to, to his concerns. And again, we uh, continue uh, to be willing to sit down uh, and to do to accomplish uh, and seek to accomplish what we have been able to accomplish in virtually every other context we've been in. This is a remarkable uh, outlier uh, community in terms of the uh, inability to forge consensus and, and the extraordinary efforts we've had to take simply to get information. In all the cases that we're working on, you're trying to affect culture change. Uh, culture change uh, is not easy. It doesn't happen overnight. And the culture change that occurred in uh, Los Angeles was the evolution to an understanding that effective policing and constitutional policing go hand in hand. That you can uh, comply with the Constitution, ensure public safety, in fact, enhance public safety, and uh, enhance uh, your uh, standing in the community. That's the three-legged stool, and we'll continue uh, to work toward that end here uh, if they uh, express a renewed interest in doing so. Does anything change if Sheriff Arpaio suddenly isn't in office anymore, or does the investigation continue? I mean, would things change with a different leader of the department? This investigation uh, was initiated in June of 2008. I was not working at the Department of Justice in 2008. Uh, President Obama was not working at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in 2008. I'm sorry. This investigation will continue. I meant uh, if Sheriff Arpaio in, wasn't in office, not the president. But, well, I, I mean, think Sheriff know, Arpaio was in office in 2008. So, but because we're, you're trying to correct problems within the department, you know, if he were to leave, I'm saying, you know, and someone else was running the department next year, would that change it? Well, no, it, we, we have to fix the problem. The problems are systemic. Sheriff Arpaio has been identified as a person involved in creating the culture that uh, has, has problematic implications, but there are other issues. This is about systems and uh, reforming systems so that we have effective constitutional uh, policing that helps to reduce crime and ensure public confidence. And it's, uh, it's something that we will continue to be here uh, as long as it's necessary uh, to fix that problem. Sir. Why is Maricopa County named as a defendant, and what is potentially at risk for Maricopa County and its taxpayers in the penalty phase? Well, Maricopa County is a recipient of federal financial assistance from the Department of Justice. Maricopa County then takes a portion of that assistance, and uh, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office is a sub-recipient. So they, the money passes through the county to the Sheriff's Office. Uh, when you accept that assistance, uh, you sign assurances that you will not discriminate uh, on the basis of race, color, or national origin, nor will any of the subrecipients to whom you give money uh, discriminate. And so they have liability. Uh, when we spoke and wrote to uh, the county attorney back in April, we explicitly noted that. So he has certainly been on notice. He participated, uh, as you're probably aware, in the February 6th uh, settlement discussions uh, that we had.